Welcome to another sermon from All People Christian Church. It is our hope that this message will encourage, inspire, and challenge you in your walk with God. Let me jump in now. It is sermon time. So, this is part two to a brand new series we started last week called Real Relationships. Will you say that with me? Real Relationships. Now, I thought of calling the sermon Relationships just more generally because I'm, I'm talking about in the different installments a lot of different relational dynamics and issues that we deal with in our day-to-day -day life. The reason I went in with Jory's encouragement with real relationships was because we all have relationships. It just doesn't mean we all have good ones. You know what I mean? There are toxic relationships. There are dysfunctional relationships. There are codependent relationships. So relationships, yes, are a part of life unless you live in a, a cabin in a remote mountainous area somewhere or in a cave underground or something like that. Everybody has relationships. They're, they're not a, it's not a question, excuse me, of whether you have them. It's a, a question of what kind of quality are they. Well, one of the things I have found that our world the world around us, the one you see every day on social media, not just in the Western United States, but all over the world and just about every culture, the one thing people are looking for more than ever before is real relationships, authentic, genuine ones. Not the shallow ones where you only show a certain side of yourself on social media. I mean, how many of you put your worst, ugliest pictures up on your profile on social media? You don't, you know what I mean? I, at least I don't, you know, I'll pick five out of the five you took and say, I look good in that one. I'll put that one up there, you know, or whatever it may be, you know, so we tend to, to follow each other and then we can more easily cancel each other. We can do all this stuff that's very surfacey and it's no wonder we live in the most insecure day and age that we've ever lived in because people from the breakup that starts in their home. Uh, to then the breakups that they experience all through their teenage years and on into adult life. It's like, no wonder we have so little security and we're trying so hard to get people to like us at all costs. But when you have real relationships, you can be your true self, good and bad. You can make mistakes and you don't have to wonder and worry, are you going to get canceled that day? So I want to talk about that because last week we talked about how if you cannot ever be honest with someone when the need calls for it or for them to ever be honest with you when the need calls for it, then you don't yet have a real relationship. You know, if I'm trying to sell a stranger something, I'm only going to find things to compliment them about. I will not, uh, on the other hand, criticize them i will not uh sit there and go like you know and by the way i think you could try a different shirt with those pants it'd look better you know i mean i'm not going to be honest like that right because we don't have the established trust yet in our relationship i want to keep it more positive more on the surface at that point but if you can't be honest or have someone be honest with you it's not real well this is another one are you tough enough anybody ever heard that old song are you tough enough? You have to be really old. You know, it's like from the 80s. So most of you weren't even born then. But how many of you have ever heard a term like that? Are you tough enough? Like at your gym or your CrossFit training session or something like that. Bella was telling me that in, in uh, Battle Mountain, that was the slogan for your city, right? Are you tough enough, right? Well, I'm asking this question for this reason as I just give you some introductory thoughts. I'm asking you this. If someone ever has to be honest with you, whether they did it perfectly or not, maybe someone you don't even know uh, said something kind of blunt or even a little bit rude to you, are you the type that completely caves in the first time somebody hurts your feelings or offends you? Because if you are, life is going to be tough. Because I promise you this, you will be hurt and you will be offended. And uh, if you just literally fall to pieces, then that's something you need to cry out to God to help you with. Amen? 
You know, our cancel culture today has lied to us and told us something that just isn't true. It says that we are not to tolerate anyone who ever offends us. Now, the only way for that to work is to keep all your relationships shallow so that when somebody does finally offend you, you can just quickly cancel them, right? But that is an incredibly lonely way to go through this life because then you have no security in any of your relationships. Why is it we always say things like family, can't live with them, can't live without them, right? Because family, I always say, you can't fire. You know, if you have a sibling that drives you crazy, or your parents drive you crazy, or I guarantee you kids drive your parents crazy, well, they're still yours. You can't get rid of them. You know what I mean? You still got to invite them to Thanksgiving dinner. It's just what you have to do. So that's why people will often mistreat the people closest to them the most because they have the most security in them and they don't feel confident to be truthful out there. So then they kind of dump it out on the people that are closest to them. Now, that's an unhealthy way to live it out, but it does prove the point that when we feel secure, we feel the liberty to be ourselves, amen? Even if it's an ugly self. And here's another one, and this got mistyped, and that's my fault, I apologize. But it's supposed to say, culture today is telling us we have a right not, say not, not to be offended. So that's another lie. Not only does it say, so again, don't write it literally there. Add the not to. That's a key difference there. Not only does it say that if someone does offend you, that's an unpardonable sin, and you should get rid of them immediately, or quit that job, or leave that marriage, or cancel that friendship, or whatever it takes, right? But it also says, which is a lie as well, that somehow you have a God-given right to not be offended. So if you are a certain type of person or you believe a certain something then i have to be so pc i have to be so careful about everything i say that i could never commit the impardonable sin which is to make you uncomfortable well you know what come on man let's get in the real world here for a minute can we because that is not the real world the real world is incredibly uncomfortable and I don't care how hard we work in the public school system or out in the, you know, the, the world of your workplace or something to protect everybody from ever getting their feelings hurt. But it's still going to happen. And if you're wondering why are there so many hate groups rising up, it's because they've got no other outlet to express that ugliness. I mean, they know they'll get fired at work, so they're going to join a club where they can just hate, 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 you know. Get it out there. I'm not saying that hate is good or that we should just spread it wherever we can. I'm just saying you can't control sin nature, okay? People are going to get hurt and they're going to hurt. And I'm not saying that we should encourage it, that we should promote it. I'm just saying that we, as God's followers, as Christ followers, need to know how to endure it. Amen? That's what I'm saying here is that Jesus, say Jesus, not me, by the way, not Pastor Brett or somebody else. He not only forewarned you, he promised you. Now, these are not promises that people put into needlepoint or something and hang on their walls because they're not the fun promises. But he promised that you would be criticized, even unfairly, by the way. Promised it. How many love being criticized, picked apart and told, I mean, come on, you know, nobody does. He also said you'd even be mocked. Like, oh, you Christian, Ugh, whatever. Or, oh, you're one of them, or, you know, oh, you're a conservative, you're a liberal, you're a what, you're a this, you're a that. You know, I mean, somebody will always mock you for something. They'll mock your, your height, your weight, your race, your whatever it may be, your age. We will always find something to mock people about. That's just what people do, right? Oh, and they'll slander you. Anybody here ever been slandered? I sure have. And it really hurts. I have been lied about and told uh, horrible things to other people behind my back that sometimes weren't even true. And it really hurt. I've also been misjudged. Anybody here ever been misjudged? You were trying to do the right thing and someone took it the wrong way and actually got offended. 
I mean, even worse, they got offended by the nice thing you tried to do. It's really discouraging, isn't it? Well, welcome to Jesus' world. Because every single one of those happened to him countless times. That's why I put betrayed. Oh, you think you're the first one to have been turned on? Did you ever have one of your 12 disciples sell you out to be killed, to be murdered and tortured? I doubt it. That's why I had to put etc. because it goes on and on and on. Amen? So that's the truth, guys. The truth is, not only will those happen, Jesus promised they would happen. So he never said, like culture has, that you have a right to never be criticized, Jeremy. You have a right, Anthony, to never be slandered. You have a right, Dan, to never be misjudged. Everybody should know, Bella, what your heart was in that matter. And you should never be betrayed. Jesus never said that. He never said you had a right for these things to not happen, nor that you could keep them from happening by just canceling everybody and living in a silo somewhere. So that's why we need tougher skin than what the world is teaching us to have nowadays. I, I am personally convinced I could be wrong. I can't prove it scientifically, but I'll bet you somebody could, you know, through enough survey and whatever. But I think we might live in the most hypersensitive generation in all of recorded human history. I mean, it's unbelievable. You, you don't even have to try to offend anybody anymore. You can just breathe and you will offend them. I mean, amen, Dan? Come on, man. You and I are old enough to remember the difference, you know, between what it is now and what it was before. And it wasn't perfect before, by the way. I'm just saying one thing that has only increased over time is the level of hypersensitivity by which we live. So, we need to do what Jesus said, and that's be able to take some slaps. Let me explain. Let's go to our text today in Matthew chapter 5, and let's read what Jesus said about this. You think 2,000 years ago, Jesus didn't see this coming? Ah, he saw it coming, and it was going on then. He said, you know, you've heard the law that says the punishment must match the injury, right? That was, in the, that was in the Mosaic law, right? It said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, which ironically, by the way, was meant to keep you from over-punishing somebody. This, is, this wasn't meant to be like you had an excuse to kill somebody, right? But then check this out. He goes, but I say, say, but I say, yeah, Jesus went on to interpret. Do not resist an evil person. What? Wait, evil people need to be kept as far from you as possible because you're so fragile. We can't let you be hurt. How dare you get a little cutsy or bruisey? Mama may not be there. Just kiss it and make your boo-boo better. Okay. He said, no, don't resist them. Don't be afraid of them. If someone slaps you on the right cheek, well, you ought to slap them back, dang it. No, he goes, you know what? Man up, woman up. Offer the other one. If they misjudge you, criticize you, and slander you on the internet, you should write the meanest response. I mean, get back at them, Lisa. No. Turn the other cheek come in the opposite spirit. He said, um, if you're sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, you better get back at them because you have every right to not be taken advantage of. That's what somebody said somewhere. And you, darn it, should never be hurt. Hurt is evil. He said, no. If they take from you, they borrow your phone and abuse it. They, you know, use your car and they'll fill it up with gas, whatever. Offer to give it to them again. Now, I'm not saying be irresponsible. The balance to all this, the full context is Jesus did not say become a person who loves and signs up for abuse anywhere you can. That's not what he said. If I lend you my phone and you mess it up, I'm not lending you my phone again. Okay, that's just going to be something we understand. Okay, but I'm not going to now cancel you and never do anything nice for you again. You understand? There's a difference. So, if a so soldier or authority figure, how dare that police officer ask me to step aside? Well, I have rights. Well, yeah, 
whatever. If a soldier demands that you carry his gear for miles, you know what? Offer to carry it for two. Give to those who ask. What? No, because I have users in my life. I have people, well, then be a parent and you will be used and you will be abused and presumed upon often. Okay, and all the parents are shaking their heads in agreement with me. Okay? I mean, Ashish is an amazing guy, but I'm sure Ashish has gotten more than he deserved. Okay? Okay, because that's what it's called to be a parent. So don't turn away from those who want to borrow. You know, I, I had a, a, a child who recently said some things that were not nice to me or my wife at all by text. And uh, I could have just written back and gone, how dare you ungrateful little, you know what, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't. We just prayed for her. And then later we got an apology text. And instead of going, well, you know, I'll consider it. We just said, we forgive you. Now, are we amazing? No, we're just trying to be like Jesus. Because if you haven't been hurt yet, then start having some children, you will be, okay? If you haven't been hurt yet, get a job, and you will get hurt. You haven't been hurt yet, join a sports team, and you will get hurt by your coach, who wasn't so nice. You know, I can remember, Dan and I can, and, and some of the others here, we can remember a day when if your coach chewed you out and you went home, and whine to your mommy and your daddy about it, they would go, well, your coach probably needed to tell you that. They would likely defend the coach. Now they'll sue the coach and have him or her fired because they hurt your feelings. How dare they? David, you played organized sports, didn't you? Did you ever once have your feelings hurt by a coach? Okay. Well, your parents should have sued that coach to the moon because you're fragile, little boy. You're such a tiny six foot five fragile little creature. I must protect you from all harm. And Jeremy, tiny little offensive lineman, I must protect you from all harm. And little tiny Anthony, because they're so fragile, right? It doesn't work like that. That's what Jesus said. Amen. Then he finally goes on and ends it with this. He said, you've heard the law says, love your neighbor, which he brings out of the Mosaic law in Leviticus and hate your enemy you know why and hate your enemy doesn't have quotes because it's not in the old covenant it's not in the bible you know where it came from the same place we come up with all kinds of junk tradition not all traditions bad i just mean that we add our little stuff to it because they just figured love your neighbor meant just love an israelite but he was like no your neighbors anyone you're near so he was tearing down this lie that all the rabbis and others were teaching. He said, I'll go further. I'll say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Wow. That would be tough to do in our day of social media, wouldn't it? Yeah. So let me just say this. To develop tougher skin like Christ, we're going to need to do a few things. Okay? Number one, we got to just start giving up our entitlements. You know, this started with uh, my generation, the Gen X men and women. You know, we were the grunge generation, you know, 80s, 90s, all that stuff, and uh, 70s even. And so we then saw you guys come up, the millennials, right? And you were the ones who, uh, instead of being mad at your parents for being divorced, you just assumed it was normal, so your parents actually just bought you more ice cream, okay, to try to make it a little easier on you. So you had you know, uh, boy bands and pop culture and Britney Spears and, you know, all of that. So you had happy music. You know, we had all the angry, you know, I hate my parents. I hate life. I hate everything. Ah, you know, and then along came this happy trend of music, right? Because everybody was getting what they wanted. And then all of a sudden, millennials started getting jobs. And these older CEOs were like, why is that new staff person calling me by my first name? I'm the CEO of the company. Or why are they walking into my office and telling me what they think we should do better? They just started working here last week. Well, they, they just thought, that's what I did with mom and dad. That's what I did with, you know. So now, you know, it's, it's more than normal. So my generation would complain about yours and say, oh, they're so entitled. You know, whatever. Well, we're the ones who made you that way, okay? So 
look, if you want, you know, to blame it on somebody, blame it on me or blame it on my parents, which is always easy to do. You know, just blame everything on the generation before you. But either way, we've got to give up our entitlements. Because the truth is, is Jesus said, to follow me, you have to give up everything. Not just entitlements, but everything. And when I say this, I'm going to go back through the verse and show you what Jesus was talking about. This means our entitlement to things like revenge. Oh, we live in a day and age of social justice. And I'm all for social justice, by the way. It's just that you won't always get it. Okay, that's a fact. Now, it doesn't mean you shouldn't fight for it, strive for it, believe for it. Believe God for it and practice it. It just means it won't always happen. So when it doesn't happen, we got to deal with it. Jesus said, I say don't resist an evil, racist, hateful person if they want to come to your church. If they've slapped you on the right cheek out there and then they show up on Sunday, offer to help them find a seat. Offer the other cheek also. That's how you change the world. Martin Luther King who followed Gandhi's example and others, they figured it out. They realized that if you just hate your enemies, you won't get anywhere. But if you actually love those who are horrible to you, you will show their evil even greater. And then what you're shooting for and working for will ultimately be accomplished. Amen? Not only that, but we got to give up our entitlement to justice. And I don't mean now just social justice, I mean personal justice. Like, how many of you have ever in your life been treated unfairly? Okay, the rest of you haven't thought enough about it, because you have, okay? Yeah, the reality is you have been, you probably were this week even. Well, you won't always be treated fairly, and you won't always get an apology from someone you deserve to. I have people that I have forgiven time and again who not only haven't apologized to me, worse, they don't even think they need to. That hurts even more. Which is why I tell people when we teach on at Victory Day about forgiveness, I tell them this. I say, please don't go to someone and tell them uh, something like, Dan, I just want you to know I forgive you for all those horrible things you did to me, man. Because you know what Dan will say? Dan will go, what horrible things? <laughs> yeah. And now I'm going to be hurt again. So I just set myself up. So don't do it. Just do what Jesus said. If you're sued in court and your shirt's taken from you, just go, you know what? It's a stupid shirt. Just give them your coat too. Then you're free. It's like they always say, if you don't forgive, it's like drinking poison and thinking it will hurt the other person. So if you want to be free, don't get an apology from everyone who owes you one. Just forgive them first. Amen? We also need freedom from our entitlement to be treated with consideration. My wife will tell you one of my biggest struggles in life, Lisa, is poor customer service. I have such a hard time with it. Because I'm like, I am here at your restaurant or your coffee shop buying your products from my hard-earned money, and you're so rude to me. Like, did no one train you? Did, you know, what's going on here, you know? But man, we have as much bad customer service now as we've ever had. It doesn't mean we have it all. We've got some people in here who work in the service industry, and they do amazing. And that's what a Christian, by the way, should do. You should be the best server at your restaurant, at your coffee shop. You should be the one who always leads by example. Now, the thing is, though, is, you won't always get it, and you won't always be treated considerately. You will go to the gym through the double doors, and you will open the first one for someone. They'll walk through. You'll go the next one, and they'll shut it behind them. And you'll think, oh, how dare they? I opened the door for them. I am entitled to be treated with much greater consideration. No, you're not. Was what they did wrong? Yeah, it was rude. Totally inconsiderate. But welcome to the real world. If that's going to ruin your day, man, you are too fragile. You've got to toughen up. Amen? 
That's why Jesus said, look, if a soldier demands that you carry his gear for a mile, see, he was talking about the Roman rulers that were lording themselves over them. You know, in the day and age when Jesus lived, a Roman soldier could just come up to you and go, hey, man, drop what you're doing. I need help right now. It would be like if you had police officers who weren't there to protect and serve. They were there to boss and dominate. And they could do it, and you had nothing to say about it. I mean, if you didn't do it, you were going to get their wrath and their punishment. But you would do it, and you'd be like, Lord, I just pray, tear down this awful Roman Empire. I hate these guys. They're just so evil. They're terrible. He's like, you know what? Just go, sure, I'll do it. In fact, I'll, I'll go extra if you need me to. Man, you do that, you're free, amen? When you decide you can't be offended anymore, because you're a dead person and dead people can't be offended. And Jesus said, you must die to yourself to follow me. Well, man, you are free. That's victory day right there. And then security. This is, did you know that of all the things that people want and need in life, security is the number one most universal need. They want to feel safe. But I'm going to alert you to some reality. You won't always feel safe in this world. Like Lisa said, the only person who will never, ever, ever break a promise to you is the only one capable, God. That's why Jesus said, give to those who ask, even the ones who didn't pay you back. And don't turn away from those who want to borrow. He knew when he said this, there would be people who forgot to pay you back. Well, you probably have at some point in your life too, and you want grace and mercy. So you got to give it. Amen? That leads to number two. If you want to develop tougher skin, like our Lord Jesus Christ, our example, then you've got to be the what? The bigger person. I don't mean get to the gym and lift weights. I mean in character. Amen? Okay? Here's what Jesus said. He said, you've heard that the law says, and he puts in quotes, love your neighbor, because that was true. And then he they, they thought from the rabbinical teachings that somehow and hate your enemy was written in the code as well, and it wasn't. He said, but not only is that not true, but I'll go further and say, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Has anyone ever been persecuted ever, like on social media even, for example? Well, if you're a celebrity, it happens all the time. I, I mean, I'm amazed at the stuff that I read online, which is why I don't read a lot of stuff online, okay, that I'm not personally searching for at a Wikipedia or something, right? It's because I saw a guy, a young man from a ministry that we're uh, uh, connected to that sent out an article, a short article on being leading by example as a husband. That sounds pretty biblical to me, don't you? You know, being a servant, leading by example, so that your kids have an example. Joe taught on this on Father's Day. I was just listening to it recently. It was awesome. And that country song was pretty cool, you know. And, um, and the people on there wrote the most hateful stuff I've ever seen. I thought they were going to write, like, good article. Thanks so much for the reminder. But the people who got offended were like single moms. Christian single moms. They were hurt and offended because he was talking about a husband leading. Now, I get it. I get that you, these women were let down by a man. The man may be a deadbeat dad, deadbeat husband. I get it. Totally get it. But I submit they were being a little bit oversensitive and hypercritical. Because the guy's intent was not to hurt their feelings. Because they were like, well, sometimes you got to be a mom and a dad. You got to, and yeah, that's true. That that is true. Uh, I mean, Dan taught on that on Father's Day when he was talking. Because there were times that he was away, and Lisa had to carry both roles. Or being a single mom, one of the hardest jobs on planet Earth. Yes, that is all true. But that wasn't the intent of the guy, and they didn't need to freak out and and write these really, I mean, really mean things that they were writing. I mean, it was. It was just ugly stuff, you know what I mean? And uh, I just thought, my goodness, that, that was sad. So pray for those who persecute you. We, say we. Oh, that was weak. Okay, say we. Okay, 
We, meaning God's people, have got to be the mature, bigger person and somehow take the high road. You know why? Because very few in culture are going to do it. Most people in culture are going to hate back. You, you say something they don't like, they're going to double it on you. At what point does it stop? It stops when somebody agrees to be the bigger person. Well, Jesus did that all the time, and he said, follow my example. Amen? That's why it's one of our greatest witnesses to our hypersensitive cancel culture when you're not like that. If you're someone who's like, you know, at my workplace, they forbid me from preaching the gospel, and I'm just not sure how to let my light shine or whatever, be the bigger person. When somebody goes behind your back to say something to the boss about you, instead of getting them back for it, why not take the high road? Maybe you even confront them with truth and just say, I just want you to know I, I was hurt by that, but I'm not going to hold it against you, man. Maybe offer to give them a ride home even. I mean, you're going to freak them out. They're not going to know what to do. Do you know the Bible actually says that when you return kindness for hate, that you heap hot coals on the head of your enemy. That's brutal. Heaping hot coals, that's, that's hardcore. But that's what you do. That's what Martin Luther King and others were doing. That's what Jesus was doing on the cross. He was heaping hot coals on his enemy. That's why we've got to be the bigger person. And last but not least, as I just mentioned a moment ago, we've got to remember our example. When I say that, I don't mean your perfect example that you've never fallen short of, because you have. I'm talking about our example, the one and only perfect one. You want to guess who he is? Jesus. Yeah, good guess. It's Jesus. Check out the rest of what he said at the tail end of this passage that we were looking at. He goes on in verses 45 through 48 to say this. That if you turn the other cheek, if you bless your enemies, and so on, he said, in that way, you will be acting as what? True children of your Father in heaven. More than ever before, we need real Christians. That's where real relationships come from, from real Christians. Did you notice I didn't say perfect Christians? There are no such things. Real Christians are people who, not if, but when they mess up, they will own it and apologize. Real Christians are those who are not trying to pretend they're perfect online or in person. They're the ones who will be vulnerable. He said, look at God. He gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good. Do you notice it was raining this week finally? Thank God. After I think the sky just cracked and broke from all the heat we were getting. It just finally just, you know, and exploded. Well, he sent the rain on the just and the unjust alike. God still gives people chances that you don't want to have chances anymore. There's going to be a few people in heaven even that you're not fond of. But you're going to have to deal with it. If you only love those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you're kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? You know, in our, quote, divided culture, you know how we get more divided? Just only hang with people who agree with you. Again, man, you and I, were on the same page. Those guys are jerks. Whatever you do, don't talk to them. Well, that's a great way to go through life. Not, okay? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect. Uh-oh, wait a second. You said we're not. Even as your heaven and father is perfect? Now, I've studied that. Looked at the Greek, gone into the original language. The perfect is talking about your state of heart. The very thing you've done when you tried to do something nice for someone and they got offended and took it the wrong way, and you're like, oh my goodness, I was even trying to do a nice thing for them and they actually got hurt and offended by it. Well, your heart was perfect. That's why the only one who will ever understand you perfectly and completely is God who always knows your heart. Amen? So if you want consideration, you want justice, you want all that, you're only going to get it from him. Amen? In the meantime, toughen up. We've got to have a little bit thicker skin than that. 
I was reading an article this week from a seminary professor and a local pastor, he's both, and he was saying in his world down in Dallas with his denomination, whatever, he said church plants go, uh, church splits, excuse me, go on all the time. And he said people often want to dress them up as like something theological, like, well, you were preaching the wrong thing or whatever. He said it's not. It's personality clashes. He said, people chronically go to church, get offended, leave the church. Go to a new church, get offended, leave that church. Go to a new one. Or they'll do worse. They'll take a group with them. And then they'll hurt that church. And very rarely does that church prosper. The one that was started for all the wrong reasons. Jesus said, we're to have a perfect heart like our Father. He set the standard to aspire to, did he not? The greatest, most heroic example of all time was this. Hanging on the cross after 12 plus hours of unjust torture and not just being physically beaten to uh, the point of not being able to be recognized for who he even was. Skin hanging off his bones, nails in his hands and his feet, hanging on the cross. I think maybe the worst was the way they mocked him. They were even like <laughs> spitting on him. And I spit on you earlier, by the way. Sorry about that. But um, <laughs> spitting on him. They were then like putting a robe on him going, oh, king, king. Even the big nasty one-inch thick thorn crown they pounded into his skull was meant to mock him. I think that might have hurt the worst. Then they're sitting there while he's hanging. They're like, oh, if you're the son of God, just come on off there then. Prove it. And while all of that was going on, I mean, you and I would have been like, wait till I get down off this cross. I rise from the grave. I know, I'm telling you, I'm coming back. I'm burning the earth. I'm scorching this place. I'm talking all you are dead. I am going to wipe you out. Wait till I send my warring angels. I'm telling you, you're going to regret every second of this. I mean, you're just sitting there thinking that. And he goes, Father, forgive them. But you know what the power was in it? He said, for they what? They don't know what they're doing you ever heard hurt people hurt people you know that one someone tried to use that on me the wrong way recently but uh nonetheless people will hurt you because they're hurt they're messed up it's not personal always i went to this one place i got really bad customer service and i thought man they just didn't like me and then i read a review later and they did the exact same thing to that guy and i was like okay it's not personal <laughs> so <laughs> We need to learn how to forgive as quickly and as often as needed. Amen? Become a professional forgiver and a professional apologizer. I told somebody once, I'm going to write a best-selling book on marriage. It's going to have two chapters. Chapter one, learn how to apologize, often and well. Chapter two, learn how to forgive, often and well. End. That's it. It's not a lot more than that. That's why at our resource table, for free, say free, free, best price in town. We have all the cards of this you could ever use. I keep a minimum of one in my Bible bag at all times. Sometimes I've even used one for a church member. I know that sounds crazy, right? And I have to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I choose to forgive so-and-so for being so darn critical of me and giving me not the benefit of the doubt. I don't feel like forgiving so-and-so. Oops, I hit the button, sorry. I don't feel like forgiving them because emotionally you usually don't. That's why it's an act of your will. But I choose to do so out of obedience to who? Jesus Christ. I don't know how much he felt like it on the cross. And I choose to forgive by my will because the Lord, amen, say the Lord. The Lord wants me to and I want to be more like Christ in every way. I understand that I forgive for Christ, not because so-and-so is even asking for it or may ever ask for it. And since I'm choosing to forgive, let's be honest here. See, we misunderstand this. We think forgive your enemies and all that means just sign up for endless abuse. That's not what it means. If you're in an abusive marriage and your husband is physically abusing you, get a restraining order, get out of that house, minimum get separated if he won't repent and change get divorced that would be my pastoral counsel 
you're like, wait a second, God hates you. you, you. No, there, there are exceptions here, okay? You understand what I'm saying? And I'm saying, since I'm choosing to forgive, I affirm that so-and-so did hurt me. I'm, I'm going to be honest about it. It really hurt, and he, she, whoever, guilty of hurting me. But through Christ, I choose to forgive them, him or her or whoever. In the name of Christ, I pray this prayer. And there's been times I was hurt so bad, so deep, I had to pray this card with that information for weeks. Until, not because theologically I hadn't forgiven them, but until my emotions caught up to my will. Do you ever notice you can forgive someone and still be mad at them? That ever happened? As in like every day? Yeah. Because emotionally you're still like, oh, but you know what you did? I'm awesome at apologizing to Jory, she'll tell you. But I'm terrible at forgiving. <laughs> I'm like, She'll be like, I said I'm sorry. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't know if you really mean it. <laughs> you know? So I'm learning to just like go away, calm down, quit being an emotional baby, right? <laughs> you didn't have to add that. <laughs> so our culture believes it has the right to be protected from offenses, but that ain't true. Christ teaches us to endure, say endure, not avoid. I don't mean you sign up for them. They'll find you. Trust me. They'll find you. Just learn how to endure them for what sake? Love's sake. Not because you're a masochist, which means you like to hurt yourself, but for love. Amen? Because somebody somewhere has got to take the higher road, be the bigger person. And if it's not the Christian at work, then what credibility do you have? What good is your gospel? Amen? Father, I pray for us. I pray for us, Jesus, that we will begin to grow thicker skin than ever before. And a thicker skin around our heart than ever before. But notice, Lord, we're not saying a callous. We want to have an incredibly sensitive heart to those who need our love, while a heart that is literally bulletproof, bulletproof, Lord, from the realities of the world we live in. In your mighty name, Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. Give him a hand. Amen. Amen. I want my... We hope you enjoyed this message from All People Christian Church. For more information about our church or for more sermons like these, please check us out on the web at allpeoplecc.com.